I want to talk just for a moment about five reasons why we're not to engage spiritual beings in heavenly places as far as doing spiritual warfare, commanding, telling what to do, really trying to rule over, etc. The first one is really, well, they're all really clear, but the first one is that Jesus himself never did. Matthew 6, the disciples asked Jesus, they simply clearly said, teach us how to pray. Now, if there was ever an opportunity for Jesus to talk about spiritual rulers in high places that were that were to come against, that are not flesh and blood, this would be a place to do it. This right here is a perfect opportunity for Jesus to say, guess what, guys? The Roman Empire is full of demons of perversion in the second heavens and demons of of greed and demons of ambition and all kinds of dark forces are up there. And here's how you do it. You come after those dark forces and that'll take care of them. Jesus didn't once say that. In fact, he said the exact opposite. When he said, they said, teach us how to pray, Jesus said, in essence, don't address heavenly beings, address God. Address God, our Father who art in heaven. In fact, if you take a look at that prayer in Matthew 6, It's toward the very end of the prayer that even talks about evil. Everything prior to that is about addressing God and addressing God for the sake of others and addressing God for our sake, but has nothing to do with evil until the very last thing and deliver us from the evil one. So we've really got to put this in perspective. And he didn't say, come against the evil one. He said, ask God to deliver you from the evil one, okay? The second one right here, the Bible warns us not to, not to slander celestial dignitaries. I like the way the NIV says that in Jude. We're not to slander celestial dignitaries. We don't know what we're doing. We're we're talking about things we don't know of if we do that very type of thing because there are authority structures that have been set up. God did not take away the, the gift that God gave to Satan and his minions. What God did do is he gives us authority on earth, but he remember, he reserves authority in the heavens for himself. The third reason is that the earth he has given to the sons of men. Again, Psalms 115, 16, the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, meaning first heaven is ours, but the earth is given to the sons of men, but second heaven and third heaven belong to the Lord. When we leave the first heaven, we tread in the area that the Lord has reserved for himself. He is the one who will send Satan to the pit. He is the one that sends the angels that followed him out of heaven to the pit, to the pit that was made for them. He's the one that doesn't. We don't do that. He does that. Okay, so the fourth reason is the power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Guess where serpents and scorpions are? They're on the ground, right where we live. And true, they're a metaphor for witchcraft. They're a metaphor for demonic attack. And that's why we know we are to command demons to come out of people. We are to take people through deliverance. We are to to remove that when they attack individual people. But we are not to go into the heavens to do that. So the final one is we are commanded not to judge angels. We have to understand that that. We, the writer of Hebrews says, have been made a little lower than the angels. How can we tell angels what to do if we are made a little lower than the angels? So you see, the time for us to judge and rule angels actually is going to come in the heavens. It's just not now. It has nothing to do with fearing powers and principalities that are up there. It has everything to do with fearing God and the authority structure of the kingdom that he has set up. This is a fundamental truth necessary to understand the mystery of spiritual warfare and our place in it. 